two of the most important historical uses of the ideal gas equation are to find out interesting pieces of information about the gas itself. Uh, the first interesting piece of information would be its molar mass, which would be the first path to identifying an unknown gas. And the second would be its density, which would change depending obviously on the state of the gas that it's in. Now, there are formulas, as we're going to see here, directly related for calculating these. I would not suggest remembering these formulas at all. There is no need. What you should do is do exactly what I've done here. Remember the ideal gas equation, which you will see a lot and will remember, and then realize that you're just replacing some things with your chemist toolbox equations. So if we've got from our ideal gas law that PV equals NRT, well, if we want to find the molar mass of a gas, well, molar mass is connected to number of moles because it's mass divided by moles. And so this is one of our chemist toolbox. Let's take that, solve it for number of moles, and we see that number of moles, of course, is mass divided by molar mass, which means we can now take N, divide it, or replace it with mass divided by molar mass. And by doing that, what we find is the molar mass of an ideal gas is going to be the mass of the gas sample times RT divided by the pressure and the volume in this particular case. And so that really actually works out for us. Instead of remembering that formula, take it back to the basics that are easily remembered. We can do the same with the gas density here. Uh, we've got a molar mass in here, but since density is mass divided by volume, and we've already got mass divided by volume in the molar mass equation, you'll notice that I've just taken the mass divided by volume and collect it together in its own term. This is the density. So I'm going to replace that. And so the molar mass is density times RT divided by P, which if we rearrange will give us the fact that the density is the pressure times the molar mass divided by RT. Again, no real need to remember these equations. Easier to remember how to get to them from the ideal gas law, which you're going to see a lot and will remember, and some basic chemist toolbox equations, and then replacing what you need to know.